Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and greetings of peace to all viewers. Welcome to episode three. Insurance, a misunderstood business. My name is Tamizi, and I will be your takabul tutor for this episode. What did we learn from episode two? Risk and uncertainty discussed in episode two was the first step in our journey to understand Takaful step by step. Of course, you cannot learn everything about risk management in one short episode. Suffice for our journey that you remember the following. Every human Muslims or non-Muslims is faced with the problem of risk. This is because as humans, we don't know for sure what's going to happen in the future. There are basically four ways to manage risk and Muslims are required to do so as well. The solutions offered by insurance is based on risk transfer mechanism where the premium is fixed. Insurance and takafu can only cover risk of financial nature. In this episode 3, we will discuss the following the contract of insurance, how insurers are able to offer risk transfer services and fixed premium in advance, the creation of a common pool, knowledge of a law of large numbers, difference between commercial and mutual insurance, why insurance is a misunderstood business. Bear in mind that some operational Insurance practices are also used by Takaful with some modification. More on this in later episodes. May Allah bless you for your efforts to seek knowledge on Takaful. Do share the videos with your families and friends. There's no copyright. Knowledge of insurance is part of the building block needed to ultimately understand Takaful. One needs to know insurance before being able to make judgment on insurance. How can you make judgment about insurance when you don't know about insurance? Let me share you a story a friend of mine told me. One day, he asked his ustas about hot dog. He asked ustas, can we Muslims eat hot dog? The ustas does know about hot dog. And he asked, what is a hot dog? My friend said, hot means hot and dog means dog. The ustas says, oh, cannot. You cannot eat dog hot or cold see insurance like that you cannot make judgment about insurance unless you know about it of course again it's not possible to share everything about insurance in just one episode we just have to pick what is necessary in our quest to understand takaful if there's a demand we can do more videos in the future say about principles of insurance, claims, etc. That's for the future. For the time being, let's learn what's necessary for insurance so that we can know the difference between insurance and takaful. One question that needs to be answered in this episode is how can insurers offer certainty of a fixed premium when they too are uncertain about the future? Bear in mind there are many similarities between insurance and takaful with some modification. I will give you some hints of what to look out for in the difference as we go along. Meantime, 
a question to ponder. Does Takaful practice risk transfer and fixed premium? Hold on to this question because this will be explored in later episodes. Remember, step by step. Okay, we have four topics in this episode. Let's go through them one by one. First of all, contract of insurance. The contract of insurance is actually an exchange of premium for promise of compensation. There are two parties involved, the insurer and the insured. The insurer promises to pay compensation on the happening of a specified event. For example, in motor insurance, they will list down what the specified event if this happened and there's a damage to the car, the insurer will pay compensation. The insured to have the privilege to claim has to pay a premium. Notice the exchange is premium, money, and the compensation is also money. This is something that we will discuss in later episodes, which could be a Sharia issue. Okay, let's look at the definition of insurance. Is it true that insurance is an exchange of money for money? If we look at this definition of a contract of insurance, a contract whereby one party, the insurer, promises in return for money consideration to pay the other insured money. So, it's very clear, it's money. This this promise, the subject matter of insurance, it was clarified in a case of the famous case Castellan versus Preston where the judge, Lord Justice Brett, in his judgment said, what is it that is insured in a fire policy? Not the bricks and the materials used in the building, the house, but the financial interest, it is money. So it's very clear that what is insured insurance is actually money for money okay so this all that we're going to discuss about uh, the contract of insurance it is an exchange of premium money for money this is very important when we look at it from sharing perspective in other episodes okay the next one how is the insurance company able to m- promise to pay the premium. Where are they going to get the money from? They create a common pool where the, the insureds pay premium into a common pool and from this premium, they pay the claim. So insurance can be described as the fortunate many helping the unfortunate few money in from the money to pay money out. Insurance are able to do this because from experience they know that many don't claim, only the few claim. So with good management selection, they are able to select the many that don't claim to pay for the few who claim. This is basically what insurance is all about. The creation of The insurer have to make sure that the money accumulated in the common pool is sufficient to pay the claim. Otherwise, this system will not be viable. How do they do this? Well, this goes to the next question. They do this with the knowledge of the law of large numbers. Before we go to this topic, let us just to this topic first. There are two types of insurance companies. One we call the commercial insurance. The other one we call the mutual insurance. There's a big slight difference between how they collect the premium. Okay, Both will still use the common pool, fortunate many, unfortunate few, but the difference is with the commercial insurance, the premium is fixed. Whatever is paid here is fixed. 
your premium, you get a quotation for your car. Is it $200 or is it $300? It's fixed. You pay. All right? And then from there, this they, they do a creation. Okay, we'll talk about this, how they fix this with the knowledge of law of large numbers. Okay? So, for commercial insurance, if the premium collected is insufficient, let's say they collected $100 million, and uh, they have to pay claims of $120 million, they are short by $20 million. How to do that? So, if it's insufficient, the loss is borne by the insurer, the shareholders. On the other hand, if the amount collected is more, for example, they collected $100 million, dollars in the pool whereas they pay only claim 80 million the 20 million surplus will become their profit they get to keep this that with the fixed premium we call this risk transfer okay whereas for mutual insurance mutual insurance is a bit different they are a company that's owned by the policyholders the policyholders own the company they are members and they make a contribution. Okay, they only insure the members. Okay, instead of paying paying a fixed premium, they pay a provisional premium. Okay, so what's ever gone inside here, it could be the same two hundred dollars, one hundred dollars, but it's a provisional premium. Okay, so they still use the common pool, but if the amount is insufficient, like just now collected 100 million but the claims you have to pay is 120 million what they do is that if the premium collected proved to be insufficient the, the mutual insurer will ask the members to pay more so all the members will have to contribute okay just remember you paid 200 dollars to the pool in this is not sufficient can you pay another 20 dollars etc etc like that so this because the premium is not fixed, it is not risk transfer. Risk transfer means the premium is fixed. This, some people call this risk sharing. Okay, so which one is Takaful? Does Takaful practice fixed premium or does Takaful practice provisional premium? Well, in Malaysia, it's a little bit of both. We'll discuss this more in later epi episodes. Okay, now that you know about this, okay, now we'll go back to the issue of the pool. How to make the pool viable so that you don't have to suffer loss or don't have to collect from the customers? Okay, this is practiced by both commercial insurer. Mutual insurer, takaful companies, they practice this, okay? Because they are managing the pool to make sure that the pool is viable, okay? They use the law of large numbers, okay? The law is based on an assumption, okay? Uh, let's take a look, okay? It's the assumption is that the occurrence of a claim Okay, to focus here, the occurrence of the claim among a group of insurers of similar risk would in future follow a pattern similar to that of an identical group in the past. Okay, so what happens is that they are using the past data experience to focus the future. Okay, let's take example in Malaysia. I gave you an, uh, this example in episode one. Oh, sorry, in episode two. Okay, uh, now we are in Ramadan. We are going to Eid uh, in a few days' time. And during the travel back to the villages, to the hometowns, every year, without fail, there will be accidents. And if we keep the data from past previous experience, you'll find that on the average, there will be about 20 deaths a day in the two weeks before Eid and the two weeks after Eid. So it becomes this information is important to insurance company. 
they can, based on the past experience, they can predict a future. For let's go back to this information here. Let's say they are from past experience. I'm using a simplified example from past experience uh, data. Let's say this is just an example. Okay, it's not real. Let's say they found that for every hundred motor cars, one is stolen from past experience. Out of hundred, one is stolen every year. Assuming that each car is worth fifty thousand. So what the uh, insurance company will do is that they will charge each participant, each policyholder, five hundred, five hundred ring uh, dollars times one hundred. They get fifty. So there's enough money in the pool, fifty thousand, to pay for one claim. So the expect the expected loss is one car out of a hundred, and average fifty thousand. So they collect five hundred. Okay, okay. This just to pay the claims. Of course, they will add in expenses and all over the five hundred. But this is just an example. Okay. So the law of large numbers is based on that assumption. The assumption that uh, using past experience to forecast future losses. Of course, uh, it is reasonably accurate, but sometimes it can go wrong. It could be uh, the rate could be more than uh, one out of hundred, or could be less than one out of hundred. It all depends. Okay, so that's why uh, the two insurers take a different view. One fix it if they got it wrong, they bear the loss. Whereas the mutual, if they get it wrong, they'll ask the participants mm, to contribute extra to make up for the loss. Okay, so that is the law of large numbers okay so the question to ponder here are there any other areas in human life where the future is forecasted based on data of the past experiences if there is then the next question is to ponder is whether such forecasting is permissible from Sharia perspective if you can do it for weather forecast why not for forecasting future losses so if can be if insurance can uh, use the law of large numbers to forecast the future, why not Takaful? So this is something to ponder. The answer will give in future episodes. Okay, all right. So coming back to the title of this episode, insurance are misunderstood. Why is insurance so misunderstood? Okay, first of all, the product is very complicated. When you read the policy, most people don't understand. It is intangible. You cannot see the, pro the surface. Mm. You cannot touch it. You cannot taste it. You cannot try it. It's not like buying a car. You can see it. You can touch it. You can try it, but not insurance. Okay. Some people uh, um, uh, compare it to selling of paper. They say, I buy motor insurance every year. I pay. What do I get? I just get pieces of paper. And be, being the many fortunates, he doesn't claim. He finds that, what do I get? I just get pieces of paper. Well, the analogy is like buying a fire extinguisher. When you buy a fire extinguisher, do you hope that your house will, be, will catch fire? No. Nobody complains. I bought my fire extinguisher for the last five years. How come my house hasn't burned down? That's not how it is. But for insurance, people do make this type of complaint. The problem with insurance is that most customers get no satisfaction. Why? Because of the many. This, the many who did not claim, they feel they're not satisfied because they felt they got nothing. Whereas the few only get something. So only the few will actually uh, feel they got something from insurance. Even then, the f this few might not even be satisfied because they claim, say, 5000 they only got paid 3000 So that's why insurance is such a difficult business because it's very difficult to give customers satisfaction. Okay, 
Why am I telling you all this? Because uh, later on, we want to see that all these problems, Takapu can solve. Takapu, if sold properly, Takapu, if explained properly, people can get mm. satisfaction. The many, the few, everyone. Okay? Another complaint is that insurance only benefit the living, not the dead. The dead gets nothing. Okay, for example, if you uh, people say you have to die to get insurance uh, coverage, the the living gets it, the dead don't get it. Well, I will tell you uh, in the last episode, the tenth episode, that for Takapu, even the dead can get benefit as well. You just have to wait for the tenth last episode. Okay, insurance have to be sold. Yeah. This is true. Even Takaful, you have to sell it because for the solution to be appreciated, you need to understand the problem first. Remember the problem is risk, not knowing what's going to happen in the future, not knowing when you're going to die, not knowing. But um, the problem uh, with uh, insurance is that, and Takaful as well, the customers, they don't feel they have the problem. They feel that, no, I will not get uh, any accident. I will not get any uh, loss. I will not die so soon. They are so confident of themselves. So this is something that we need to explain to our customers. Okay. So we come to the end almost. Let's uh, just uh, summarize. What did we learn from this episode? Okay. What the main reason? That the contract of insurance is an exchange of prem, uh, premium, which is money, for promise of compensation, which is also money, on the happening of a specified event. This is very important because exchange of money with money has got some sharia implications. This will be explained in the next episode. Uh, the money to pay the promised compensation to the unfortunate few comes from the funds accumulated in the common pool contributed by the fortunate many. So it's the many paying for the few. Okay, this is why uh, many people feel that uh, insurance, they, uh, they, they don't get anything because the fortunate many, no, what they should feel is that they should be, as a fortunate who don't have a claim, they should be thankful, be grateful that they do not make a claim. Okay, but uh, again, Takapu can overcome this issue. Premium collected, we learn that premium collected uh, collection can either be fixed or provisional, depending. Uh, commercial, it's insurance is fixed, mutual insurance is provisional, and subject to future collections. Okay, which one is Takapu? Well, we'll have to wait and see in future. Okay. Uh, insurers are able to forecast future losses with reasonable accuracy. Not perfect, reasonable accuracy, using the law of large numbers, like just now we said. From past experience, we use the past experience to forecast the future. Of course, we have to take into uh, consideration changes in economic situation, inflation, and all that. Okay? And remember, many insurance practices are also used by Takaful with some modification. More on this in later episodes. Okay? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have now completed, if you have watched uh, episode 1, 2, and 3, we have finished three episodes. Now, with this knowledge, inshallah, we can now go through the next episode to know what are the sharia issues in insurance. Okay, Rarar, Maisir, Riba, and all that. And we'll go on and to the last one and we'll see how Takaful can, to those who believe, can benefit from its hidden benefits. Okay? Okay, uh, that's all for episode 3. Bye-bye for now. See you again in the next episode, inshallah. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And see you again. Bye-bye.